He plays for the UW Badger football team. <laughs> So I just 
And basically that, you know, that year, that, that second, second to third semester was that, like, the best time of my life. You know, I was the happiest guy every day, no matter what happened. I was just so happy because I had God in me. And I just really you know, felt that, just that friendship that he gives you if you really you know, search after him and, and really you know, try to follow after him hard. And uh, you know, obviously in school, didn't, honestly school didn't go too good that semester because I was you know, every night, I had two nights on the camp, one night on the So I never studied, you know, I didn't do anything. And so, you know, I got like a 2.0 that semester, you know, I got like a probation, so I'm like, all right, I got to do something, because obviously, you know, I was happy, but I have to, you know, be able to balance something. So, um, you know, I just chose to really get involved in some small groups, because I, I felt that's where I grew uh, the most, or I grew the most, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I grew the most in small groups, and that's what I wanted to get involved in, um, especially with this, the lifestyle. Meet all you guys, you know, it'd be hard for me to be here and get really close to all of you. So, um, you know, I chose to just get some small groups and things like that. Um, but, you know, for, for you guys, um, well, I guess I'll just mention my testimony. Um, so basically, we had going on, um, you know, started being successful in football. You know, that was me, that's all God. Um, you know, I couldn't do anything without him. You know, I'm going to go out in the game Saturday and, you know, he can take it all away from me um, if, if that's his plan. So, um, you know, I just got to keep.
state like competes in nothing, you know? It's, uh, it, it took me like 10 minutes to like trade in my colors and be a bachelor, you know? It's like, so, so I, I, I graduated from my state and I spent my first year out of school with crew in South America in Brazil, doing some missions work there. Had a great time, that's where I met my lovely wife. I have three kids who are three years old and younger. Um, so I brought them, I, I got a picture here. Uh, you can kind of see it's a little dark. Shoot! Um, but my, um, my life is awesome and really ridiculous at, at this point with Kelly's kids. So you can't see it, but my, this is my daughter Marguerite, she's all girl. And my son Will is a totally boy, he's wearing goggles at the very back of So, um, they're really fun and ridiculous. My, uh, my wife is fantastic, we just had our third kid, Charlie, um, this, uh, just this summer. And so, uh, you can kind of see that up there. Um, that's my wife, she looks pretty good, and that's like after 16 hours of labor. So, ladies, if you ever go through that and feel like that good, good luck. So, <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. So that's a little bit about me. I love Wisconsin. I love being here. Uh, uh, I'm so glad that I'm here. What I want you to do now is, this is a big room. Like, there's a lot of you guys here spread out on three levels. Um, and uh, it, can be, it can be easy to kind of fly under the radar and not get to know people. But we want to make that really as hard as it can be. Uh, so we want you to feel like, oh, you really get to know people. Now, you are um, intelligent, social humans, right? Um, and, uh, and so uh, what I want you to do is I want you to kind of grab six people, right? So the two people on each side of you, maybe turn around and grab the three people behind you. Um, but try to form a little group of six. And I want to give you just a little bit of time to talk, do human things, and communicate about life and who you are. Uh, you can do that. And uh, if you have a hard time knowing what to talk about, your question that you can discuss with each other is, um, hey, why did you decide to come to Matt? Why are you here? Why is you come to UW, right? So I'll give you a few minutes, meet and greet, mingle, get each other's names. And we, we really want to be a community, right? We really hope that, uh, that you don't just, you know, you don't sit through your first semester like Jared, alone in your dorm room, right? Um, uh, we hope that community happens, not just here, but outside the walls of this place. And so where you strap on your courage is, I'd love for you in that group of six, or whatever you had, um, Find a place to rendezvous between now and next week, all right? Some of you are like, oh, good, you know, like, <laughs> some guys are like, yes, that goes so hot, you know, right? <laughs> Maybe we'll get married, you know? Uh, not on the first date, though, not on the first date. Uh, but uh, this will be a great opportunity, so kind of turn, exchange some phone numbers, and this is going to be Ian's Pizza, uh, the new morning comment date joke is like a palace. <laughs> This is your first year here. 
Like, this is the time in your life where this is your life, right? This is the time in your life where you get to make all the big decisions about who you're going to be, what your life is going to be about, what you're going to value, who you're going to become, right? It's, it's like, it, I think it's incredibly exciting and a little bit terrifying at the same time, thinking about this, this is the time where this is, this is your life, right? And there will be decisions that you will start making now, all the way through the end of your college career. And the decisions you make is set the course for the next 40 to 60 or however many years you get left in life. But it's this week. It's right now. This is your life and you get to live it. I love it. I think it's so fun. I remember, um, you know, like, uh, moving into the dorms. How many of you guys you know, you moved in, right? How many of you were, like, brought way more stuff than you should have brought to campus? Yeah, that's totally me. My parents were like... Why did you bring that, you know? Uh, my minivan was totally full and uh, of all sorts of stuff, you know? Uh, and I had to like go through my room and make all sorts of decisions about things I was gonna keep and things I was gonna throw away uh, when I came to campus. And some of them were kind of big, like about what I was gonna keep or what I was gonna send back to my parents, and some of them were easy, you know? But there was a lot of decisions. Um, and uh, like, um, how many of you are living in an apartment for the first time this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are going to have to buy, like, toilet paper for the first time ever, right? Uh, how many of you are in the dorm? Yeah, and you're like, I'm going to hurt myself on this stuff, right? It's like, it's like Bible paper, you know? Like, it's like, it's, it's dangerous. So I'd love to, if this can be your personal stash, Are you going to go it alone? Are you going to 
are you going to just tough it out, or are you going to really find a way to be connected to that community? It's a big decision. How you deal with that? Um, another one uh, is uh, you might have brought like the picture of your uh, that significant other with you, you know, um, and maybe they're at a different school or they're back home, right? And uh, and this is a big decision about how do you make a relationship like that work? Is that person going to be in your life or not? It's, it's a big decision. That's actually my wife dating. Uh, uh, or, 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 uh, or this one, right? Flip flops. Are you going to wear your flip flops in the shower? Yes. Yes, you are, right? Um, because if you decide no, you're going to have to decide what kind of anatomical cream. So, it's a big decision. I actually, there's a dude, I, I wanted to punch him. Uh, I might go for my first beer, and he was like, you don't, you don't need sandals. You know, they say, if when you first wake up, if you don't go to the bathroom in the morning, you can, like, your urine will kill the athletes on your feet. And I was like, no, you are not doing that in the shower. You know what I mean? Disgusting! Wear the flip flops in the shower. Save everybody a lot of, a lot of, a lot of pain. Um, that's disgusting. That's disgusting. Uh, there's another one. Um, there is a, you know, it's a mystery, right? When you see pictures on Facebook, what's in this thing? You know? Like, I don't know! You know? Uh, when you're like, yeah, with all your friends, right? <laughs> but there's sort of, there's sort of a red cup lifestyle, right? That is, I think, where almost wherever you go on, on, to any school in the country, right? That's there. And you gotta decide, is that gonna be part of, part of my experience? The campus or not? You know, what are you gonna do with that? It's all over the place. It's a real decision. You gotta figure out. Is that gonna be a part of what you do? Um, your family, maybe you brought a picture of your family. Um, you know, maybe your folks, uh, your parents, maybe they raise you to be somebody. You gotta decide, is that who I want to be? You know, like, do I want, do I want that? Um, some of you maybe came here and you're like, I don't, I didn't bring a picture of my family because I don't want anything to do with that. I wanna be my own person. And then maybe your, your past is painful and you're done. This is your time in your life. You're going to decide who you're going to be, what's your life going to be about, what's going to shape it, um, what's going to determine those things. This is a big decision about your life. What are you going to do? Um, related to that, um, is you have all these textbooks uh, that cost way too much, <coughs> even when they're scammed to use, right? Um, and, uh, you know, I'm one, of my, one of my good friends, I had a friend, a buddy, his name was Byron, and he was, his family was a, an immigrant family. Uh, and he was the first, first generation in the state. And um, his parents sacrificed a lot for him to be here. His parents were doctors. And all like three or four of his older siblings were doctors. And Byron was supposed to be a doctor. But he didn't really want to be a doctor. But he lived with a lot of pressure. And there were people who had a plan for his life. And he had to make a decision. You know, is he going to do what he wants to do? Plot his own course? Is he going to live under that pressure? Or is he going to decide to do his own thing? Sometimes you get your books and you feel like, I just spent 600 bucks on books, this better be my major, you know? <laughs> and it feels like you're deciding your life. It's a big decision, right? And it was your decision. You get to make it. It's your time. It's your time in your life. You get to do that. You know, um, my parents, for me, I mean, everybody goes through this. You know, everybody who comes to school, you, you got, you, you're faced with a series of decisions that will shape who you it's like a, a, a principle of extrapolation. You take any series of choices and you extrapolate it out in the future and you think, yeah, that will shape who I become in my life. You know? Um, I think it's really important that at certain periods of your time, a wise person once told me, certain periods of your time of your life, you just have to stop and take stock of life and look around and say, is this the direction I really want to go? When I think about the person I want to be, like when I'm laying on my deathbed and telling my grandkids about my life, like, is this the direction I want to go? Is this the person I want to be? And you got to take stock and, and make some decisions about those sorts of things. Everybody does it. You know, I, I remember my, uh, my freshman year, my first year, you know, my, my parents, uh, it's the hottest day of the year. And they, my dad is sweaty and grumpy and my mom is, like, weepy and, you know, whatever. And, um, and they, they drive away. And uh, I'm trying to be tough right now because I'm like, I don't want, you know, I'm new. Like, a dude is like... You know, I'm fine. I don't need anybody. Whatever, you know. Whatever. And uh, my parents drive away, and it's like, 
you know, and I'm like, whatever, you know. I just sit by myself in my room. Um, uh, but I got to my room, and that night, I got a phone call from some friends who were a year older than me, and they said, hey, Adam, I'm going to take you out. And it was my first night in college, and I went to probably 10 house parties in a row. And I had I'd never experienced anything like that in my life. It's culture shock, right? You like smell things and see things and rub up against sweaty people in nasty basements. You know what I mean? And it was like, I was like, what is this? You know? Um, but I'm 18 years old, and there's this part of me like, that was like, oh, oh I think I like it. You know? Um, you know? Um, and so there's this part of me that was like, that's great, but I get back to my dorm room. And I remember I just sat down on the bed, and it's like 2.30 in the morning, and I was just like, what the heck was that? You know, like, what was that? And you know, I was, I was, all of a sudden I was thinking like, okay, there's, maybe there's some decisions I have to make about my life. You know, like, because um, I think this could be fun. But for me, in my box, there was something else. There was um, this. And I don't know why I brought it, and I don't even know why I had it, but it was a free Bible that somebody had given me. And um, I don't know, it's, it's like I might need it in school, you know, like it's a life jacket or a parachute, you know, I'm like, you know, it's going to be in my closet, you know. And, um, and, uh, and it was this God decision. And, and I never really read the Bible. I mean, I would have said I, I believed in God, I would have like, prayed, I did the church thing with my family. You know, I did all those sorts of things. Um, and, um, and I actually even been to a youth conference the summer before I came to school where I was like, wow, God, God seems pretty cool. I think I maybe want that. But there, there I was. It's 2.30 in the morning in my dorm room. And all over again, I'm thinking, do I want this? Like this God decision. Is there, is there even room for this in my life? Do I want it? Will it have any ramifications for who I am or what I do? Will Will I choose to follow God, follow Jesus while I'm in college? You know, it's 2 a.m., and I just felt like, oh, there's like this pole, you know, in two directions, and I was trying to figure out. Oh, I think one of the biggest decisions that you can make in your life, that anybody can make in their life. Why well, was, what do you do with this one? You know, I don't think it matters if you grow up in a church or not. If you come to school and you just you make all these sorts of decisions, everybody's in the same boat. Because no one's waking you up in the morning to haul your butt to church or anything like that. And even if you grew up, even if your religion was no religion, you know, you're making these decisions about what do you really think? What do you really believe? What's, what's going to shape who you are and how you see the world? You see, but it's, it's one of these things, I think it doesn't matter because there's something in us that is sort of bent, like, that is kind of bent away from God. You know, and um, in our hearts, we have like ADD in our hearts. And our hearts are like, shut you know? And, um, and anything, all sorts of things besides God sort of just draw us in those directions. You know, our hearts are just bent. They've got ADD. And for me, the freedom I felt when my parents drove away, it was pretty awesome. You know, like, I was finally in my life, you know, I could do the things I wanted. I could, you know, all these things, all these feelings, all these opportunities that, like, they came rushing at me. And I could feel the pull from them, and they were enormous. You know, we make decisions all the time. It's, a lot of times, a lot of the decisions we make, we don't even know they're happening. You know, we just sort of slide into it. I was 20 pounds heavier at the end of my, than I am now, when at the end of my freshman year. Right? And I just sort of slid into that. You know, there was a, uh, they, uh, and I was thinking, you had a card, you swiped it, and then you could go through the line as many times as you wanted. At breakfast, it was like, I'll take another donut to go to, you know? And, uh, and I just started deciding it, and it happened, it was just kind of happening to me. And, uh, and uh, I got to the end of my, uh, my freshman year, and I went home, and I didn't realize I changed, and people were like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I've been working out? No, no, not that at all. You know, but the decisions we make in college, they're big. And, um, and I really think the decision that you make about God, this God decision, this is like, I think this is probably the biggest one. Because that decision will shape every other decision that you make. You know, it'll shape how you look at the world, what you say yes to, what you say no to, how you spend your time. It affects everything. Even if your decision is no, I don't want this. 
or I don't even believe it, will radically affect you. And it's a, this God decision, I don't think this is a decision that you can slide into. I mean, at least you can't slide into it and have it be an affirmative decision. Right? You're not going to just sort of, ah, oh, just something happens with God. That's what Jared said, right? You know, it's like, if you do that, it's almost always going to come out, no, because our hearts are going to bend. We've got this ADD problem. And we just run after whatever we can, whatever we can find. And it's not new. This is something I think it's all over the scripture. It's all over history that we see this. You know, uh, real briefly, tonight, I, the Israelite people, we're going to look at a passage of Jeremiah 29. But the Israelite people, this was their story. They were, they were taken into exile by the ancient Babylonians. They were carried off to a new land that was really different from their own. Life was difficult. Government and culture seemed to say that their way of life and their faith had no place in that place. Uh, and in that difficult, in that difficulty, and away from their center of worship and from like this either God-centered culture, their hearts just sort of seem to do the ADD bend away from God. And it's into this environment that I think is actually pretty similar to the one we're in that God spoke some words through a prophet Jeremiah. Yahweh said this. He says. It's like, I just love this, because it's like Yahweh, he's like, he's like, I know you're bent, I know you're going away, but it's like he's constantly trying to get our attention, trying to constantly get the attention of the hearts of humanity. He says, listen, you know, life is difficult, yes. And then he says this, for I, but I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare, or for good, and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. And then you will call on me, Come and pray to me, and I will hear you. And you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Love this passage. Because God, for if, you, if you were an ancient Israelite, you, you would, from this just this little snippet, you'd learn a couple things about God. One, uh, two things, really, I think. One is that um, God has a plan. Right? You'd be thinking, okay, I know life seems weird right now, and I don't know what's happening, but God has a plan for my life. And apparently that plan is good. And it might even be hard to believe that it's good. But it's like, I guess God has a plan for me, it's good. I think I can trust him. And the other thing that you can know about God was that he, wa he wants to be found. Like you say, he wants to be found by you. Right? That's what it says at the very end. He says, I will be found by you, declares it. So no matter where you are, no matter who you are, what you've done, or even what you, if you think he exists, there is a good God who has a plan for your life and wants to be found. And then there's a couple things about ourselves that what I think would seem a little bit strange or difficult. And one would be that, um, that we have the ability to talk to God about our life and our plan, even our doubts or our hopes about him. He'll listen, he cares, right? He says, you will call on me and pray to me, you can talk to me. And then, that if we actively seek Him, you, you have to actively seek Him if you want to find Him. You can't be passive. You can't just do that. You know, for me, that first night in college, this was what I was feeling. It was like, I was, felt this tension in my heart. You know, I was like, I remember thinking, okay, God, I, you know, I'm looking at my life, and I felt like I was at a crossroads, and I could decide one of two paths. The path that it seemed like, you know, most of my other buddies were taking, or it seemed like God was saying, Adam, behold the plans I have for you. God, something better for you yeah, if you just follow me. But you got to decide, you know. you got to decide what the orientation of your heart would be. It wasn't like, oh, I knew exactly what was going to happen, and God, I'm all in, I'm going to, you know, it wasn't like that at all. I was just like, okay, do you, I want the orientation of my heart to be one that would point towards God, not one that would just kind of point to myself and whatever shiny thing sort of distracts me. But I knew I had to make room for it was like, I was, I was just saying, I don't want to have something better. And today, I know a lot of people who deeply, deeply regret not seeking God in their college years, but I've never met one who regretted the decision to turn their hearts towards God and to seek Him. Seek him. I didn't know that then. I know that now. But in that moment, I was just feeling the whole. And i got to believe there's a lot of you been here for a week, and there's already this, who am I going to be? What's this about? Ah, uh, and you're here. I don't think that's by accident. i got to believe God is like saying, hey, look at the plans I have for you. You're good. See 
in me. I want, I want to be found. I gotta believe that's what he wants to say. You know, Jesus is it to kill Joel. And all part of me was like, if I do this one, God, I think my college experience might suck. I don't know, you know. But Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and have it to the full. All out, abundant, full, significant life. It's not like fame and riches, but a life of deep meaning and significance and purpose and joy. And he says, um, taste and see, in Psalm 34, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, he's like, just try me, take a bite, I'm delicious. You want more, you know? And if you're here tonight and you're thinking like, I don't know, you know, what I've experienced of God in Christianity doesn't seem that great, I don't think I want it. I think that's actually probably evidence that you haven't tasted the real thing yet. Just God says, if you know me, I'm good. Maybe you've tasted a political Jesus or some sort of a dull duty, you know, some religious system or something else, but I don't think you've tasted the real thing yet. Because he says, I'm, I'm good. Just try it. You want more. That you have to decide. So for me, that night in my dorm room, I was like, okay, God. You know, I've done this thing for 18 years my own life. I think I can give you a shot. Like I said, I didn't know where that would end up, but I knew I wanted to do it. And so I decided to jump in, and I jumped in all in, kind of like Jared did the second semester, and I got all of a small group. I came to prime time. I didn't know anybody. I went to socials that I didn't know anybody there. I was just like, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to try it out. I'm going to see what happens. And I think this free Bible, by evidence of like the, um, the duct tape and the pages that are falling out, that, those first two years for me in college, I never read this thing or opened it up. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, this is amazing. God does have a plan for me. And it is good. And I want to I experience it and know it. And I ate this thing up. But now this is your life, and it's your decision. God says, for I, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for good and not for you, to give you a future. But the choice is yours. It's a decision you've got to make at some point. But you can't slide into it like your freshman 15. There's got to be something that you actively decide, okay, I'm going to try it out. I'm going to take some risks. You have to choose, actively choose, pursue it. Because all the decisions you make in your box in the next four to six years, this one, this God decision, I think really is the most important. And we want to be here to help you figure that out. So no matter where you're at, if you have questions, that's awesome. We're glad you're here. If you're like me and you're like, okay, I know I got to choose. I'm in, okay. You know, like, we want to be a community where you can figure that out. And hopefully where you just kind of taste and see and experience the plans that God would have for you. And then we get to do that in the context of a community. And we really get to see that God is good. His plans for us are good. And that we can find Him. Because He wants to be found by